it's Ivy here today and welcome back to another video. Today I have this video that means like so much to me because it hits really close to home. I've just been like thinking of doing this video for a really really long time because I feel like people who are on my channel really relate to me and the things that I go through and the feelings that I feel in relation to anxiety and all that. So this video is going to be the tips and tricks that I use for myself and implement into my daily routine to kind of help prevent anxiety attacks, to help prevent me from spiraling, getting into like a deep anxious pit for like days or weeks or months on end. This is something that I've like over the years done a lot of careful research on for myself, did a lot of trial and error and really tried to figure out what works for me. So this is just like my daily tips that have worked so much for me and I would love to share them with you guys. The title that I'm gonna title this, it's something like the the daily habits or daily routines that I do to stop me from spiraling into anxiety was actually inspired by this video that I saw um, of spiraling into a depression spiral. I haven't seen the video quite yet, <laughs> but I really, really did like the title and I couldn't like quite figure out what I wanted to call this video. So I just wanna like let you know that. And yes, I'm pretty much copying the title of this video. Before I get on into the video, um, I guess I wanna show you guys a quick outfit of the day before I went to drop my sister off to school. This is my outfit of the day before we go out. My little shoes. These are from Adidas. I think they're like the Jane Smith ones and they've got like... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They've got like this super cute pattern on it. My family got that for me for my birthday last year. I have this top. I bought it from Supre like years ago when I was probably like 18. Still kind of fits me. I have these jeans from Topshop. They're like... Super cute high-waisted mom jeans. I have this cardigan. It's from H&M. But the main attraction to this outfit is this bag I want to show you guys. It's by Teddy Blake in, in New York. It is this incredibly stunning bag that is a bag. <laughs> what I love about it and what I found out about this bag is that it's actually made directly in Italy in like the same area as well where all the luxury handbags are made. I don't know if that includes like big label brands, but I know when I went to Italy a couple years ago, they had a lot of really high quality, a lot of handmade like bags and shoes that were made from like real craftsmen. They have craftsmen that have been making these kind of designs and bags for years. And so there's that. Um, they have a lot more ranges of different like luxury kind of bags and different kind of colors. So if you want to go check that out, I will link it below, but let's go. This morning, I went to two different cafes to try to find one I could sit in. I drove to one that was closed and this one was full. So I ended up taking my food away and having a little picnic on my patio. Whilst having my second breakfast, I decided to do my devotions and wanted to show you guys my journaling routine. But first, let me show you guys what breakfast I got. I got this huge almond croissant and a green juice. The croissant was good for me, as in it tasted really good to me. And the green juice, also good for me, but I guess in the way of like, it was good for my liver and my kidney and all. I'm not gonna lie, I could really taste the celery in this green juice and I didn't like the taste, but overall I knew it was good for me, so I finished it. And I always think it's good to have a balance between the foods that you eat, eating foods that you really, really enjoy, but also eating foods that you know, may not necessarily be the best for you, but eating them anyways, cause they're good for you. <laughs> Journaling, I find, is an amazing way to really declutter your mind. If you do this in the most effective way, I know once I start feeling anxious or feeling like I'm really letting the fear take over my life more than usual, I'll journal. You can do this as many times in a day, a week or month you want. And I feel like journaling really does have a long lasting, amazing effect on my anxiety too. Ask yourself the following questions and answer them as vulnerably and as real as possible. The beauty about journals is that hopefully it's just for yourself to look back on and reflect. Ask yourself, how are you feeling today? Make it brief so not to dwell on it too much because the next part is more important. Ask yourself, why do you feel this way? Keyword, why? Jot everything you can think of down. I find that once I write my why and read it out loud, it seems less bigger than I made it in my head. Give yourself a little encouragement, whether that be a Bible verse or something just really nice that you feel like you really like to read. And of course, finish off with three things you're grateful for. Help me like you never let me go. 
I always think having a good balanced diet works wonders for your mental health overall. It includes eating really good foods for you and foods that you enjoy, but this also includes eating really good solid portions. I have here a mix of food. I have here some basmati rice, a chicken kebab, heaped broccolini and spinach, and of course, to give it some flavor, KFC potato and gravy. Also, don't forget to keep hydrated. Buy yourself a bigger water bottle if you think that will help you. Also, I think it's truly important to be cautious of emotional eating, whether you don't eat because you're stressed or you binge and indulge on foods when you feel really sad, just like me. Make sure that you're not eating based off your emotions as it can become quite a really bad habit for yourself. So when it comes to naps, here are my favorite tips for having the best kind of naps. Don't sleep in your own bed. That's an absolute no. Create a nice sleeping environment. So close all the sources of light, such as blinds, any doors you might have open, and ensure that the temperature is a temperature that is comfortable for you. You're not too hot or too cold because you will keep waking up if you are on either side. And sleep in a space that is generally a place that you don't sleep in at night such as your couch. I found that the amount of rest I have tonight actually really heavily determines my anxiety levels the next day and if I don't get any sleep I'm definitely more anxious than usual. Having a nap when I didn't get enough sleep the night before actually really does help. I always find that the best tips for taking a nap include not sleeping in your own bed that is an absolute big no before when i used to take naps before i found this out i used to take a nap in my bed all the time and i couldn't get to sleep at night time your bed should actually just be for sleeping and nightly activities if you are doing that other than that you should not be doing your homework you should not be doing any kind of critical like thinking or studying or anything like that and you definitely shouldn't be napping in your own bed what i found that like i separated my sleep space at night time from taking a nap in the afternoon i actually found that i could fall asleep at night time better so this is why i always try to sleep on the couch somewhere different tips that i have for like i guess falling asleep quicker is literally just to turn your mind off and I know that sounds really really hard to do but in a way it's kind of like meditation in which like you literally try to tune out your thoughts you just let the thoughts pass you don't think about it you don't dwell on it and even like relaxing all your muscles like I find that when I lie down until I consciously like try to relax my muscles I still feel really tense and everything so when I lie down I try to like start from the head upwards just you literally just like relax your head and all like the frown lines in your forehead relax your face like just relax every little part of your face your cheeks cheekbones your jaw unclench your jaw I found that so many times I think I'm relaxed and then I unclench my jaw and I realize how like tight I'd clench my jaw for a really long time and then work your way down to your feet like just literally relax every single part and muscle of your body and it'll just be so much more easier to fall asleep generally I have a pretty good sleep life like I sleep a lot and I love sleeping so it's um pretty good for me other than saying that though like have like had times of insomnia when it comes to like major times of stress when it comes to like exam periods or like lots and lots of heavy assessment i've found that like i haven't had insomnia in those times and even when i was on my period i used to have insomnia a lot where i would wake up super duper early literally because my body would just like wake me up wasn't even a particular reason so i had to google this and really put it in practice it's been like since I was like in grade 12 or something like that, just been practicing all these different things for me to help me sleep better and you know it's been like seven, eight years since that and I find that like I sleep a lot better. So those are my tips. So taking bubble baths are my absolute favorite, especially when you light candles and you have a good book and the temperature of the bath is really nice and warm. It's honestly so relaxing for me and something that I'll do when I want to have a night off from editing rather than just watching a movie. Being physically relaxed really does help me prepare to be mentally relaxed, even if I don't feel it prior to hopping into the bath. 
Um, I know this is a temporary relief, however, if you did actually have an incredibly stressful day, it really does help you to unwind. Aside from that, you can just listen to some calming music the entire time or listen to a podcast. I decided to put on a little face mask slash mask for under my eyes whilst in here and found that I was just in such a nice and pampered mood. Definitely great to just treat yourself on the days that you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed and a little bit stressed. My night routine. I generally tend to sleep at 10.30 every night so I can get up before 7. Find that after a long day of work and editing, I really just need some time to relax. So I've created this little night routine for myself so I don't go to bed, um, I guess, feeling wired and anxious. By 8 o'clock, I'll light my favorite candles and really dim the lights so that I only have this small amount of light in the room. Do my, my night routine, ensure that I have no makeup on and have brushed my teeth. I'll watch TV for about an hour. Right now, I've just been watching The Office all over again. And during this time, I'll drink my chamomile tea, which helps me fall asleep super easily. And I found that it's best to drink my chamomile by 8. Otherwise, I'll have to keep getting up in the night to pee. By 9 p.m., I turn my alarm on, put my phone on Do Not Disturb, and from there, I'll just read the rest of the night. I'll take my eyes away from the screens till the morning, and I just find that after a long day of staring at the screens, it can help my eyes and mind to relax and be ready for bed so I can just fall asleep. So those are my tips and tricks that I have to really help me out. Um, with my anxiety daily and i hope this really helps you guys a lot this is something that you can apply to your life if you didn't know about some of the tips that i shared let me know if you like this video and you'd like another part of it and yeah like this video if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already and i post a new video every single thursday and follow me on instagram it's at ivan with two e's have a wonderful day or night goodbye <laughs>